Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So, um, haven't had some videos out in a while. Just a lot of stuff going on. Um, hoping to start picking things back up. But it's just been a lot of life going on. And uh, that's what it is. So anyway, so today I'm going to take a look at um, one of the work holding uh, issues I've had with the Yeti is because of the way the gantry is set up where it actually rolls on the top, it makes it a little more challenging to uh, do hold downs. So you can do the, some screws, you can do some blocking, but you really can't raise up above your um, surface, your top of whatever board you're cutting. So um, I have used screws in the past. I've done some blocking systems and just not really happy with them, uh, especially when I hit a uh, $80 bit on a screw and it's pretty much done at that point in time. So one of the things I'd looked at too, and I could, and there's their compressor. Alrighty then. So air compressor, great. Anyway, so one of the things I want to look at, or I looked into was doing a composite nailer. And they are um, a little bit expensive. And just thought, ah, it just seems like a lot of extra money to spend into um, hold downs. Um, so I just kind of was hesitant in, on spending that kind of money. And with some of the projects I've got going up where I end up, you know, a project may be you know, seven, eight, nine, ten sheets of plywood. Um, and holding down full sheets is a little, you know, harder because you, your, your spoil board is essentially the same size. So it became a little bit more challenging to do that. So that, you know, put me more into, at least let's take a try. Uh, let's take a risk at it. Um, so I went out and bought a composite nailer and some uh, nails on it. And then I'm gonna show you how we use them and what I think about it as we go along here. All right, so here's that nailer. And uh, you can see where the screws, it looks like, you know, essentially it's very similar to, oh, well, like uh, some type of a trim nailer. And uh, except it's shooting these small nails, let's see if we can get one apart. So they are kind of, I don't know how well you can see this, they are essentially a square nail. Um, and we've got a little bit of a, like a finish head on top of that. Now I can get these, I think from inch to two inches long. So depending on the material that I'm using, I go longer ones. I opted just to get the, the one inch, um, like going with half inch material. I don't need any more than that. Even at the three quarter inch material, that's actually probably enough to hold it in place. So this is by spot nail. Um, one of the things I do like here, it says it'll give me a count on how much, um, a quick count on here. And I actually wish some of the other um, nailers would have that. And actually, you know, it's, it's count. So if I change into full it's all the way back in here so you know um, I can see I've got a full clip and at a quick quick glance looking down at the gun I can actually tell how much I have left um, and how much is in there so so right now we've got 10 left in there so I am going to change the camera around here and I'll get you down in here close. All right, so we're getting ready to lay this out. Typically what I'll do if I'm doing a full sheet, I just come in here and kind of, I've got my spoil board kind of set up and I will just kind of align with the one edge, come in, done. So really quick, easy. Periodically, I'll get uh, a little bit of a, the nail doesn't quite set all the way. So I'll just do it with a chisel real quick and 
knock it down. So the detonation is solid, but when I want to release, I just grab a hammer and done. Then I go off to my next sheet, load up that, throw that on, line it up. That quick. So it is definitely a time saver. Um, I have to watch out with, depending on your material underneath, how well these go down. All right, so I did want to try it on. So this is a piece of elm. This is really thick, and I am I haven't used this before, so we'll see. It's not going to hold just because of the thickness on here, but let's see if we can even drive through into that. Oh, wow. Yep, drove that in all the way. So elm is a little bit harder to work with, so, but... That's all, that's straight into the elm. So here we got a nice piece of, I believe this is a three quarter, a little over three quarter white oak. And I'm out of nails. So even at three, a little over three quarters, so I only have uh, a quarter inch into my substrate underneath, it's still holding well. Now you'd probably want to make sure that you leave these outside of wherever your cut area is. So this, if I was cutting this out, I'd want to be cutting within that area. Um, but yeah. All right, so that thing actually works really well. I was actually surprised on the the elm and the oak that it actually shot through. Um, if I was using three quarter inch oak, um, I'd probably want to go to an inch and a quarter nail rather than the one inch. Uh, so, but it's still, you know, it's even at a little over three quarters, it still held. It wasn't, I don't think it was that stable, but it was holding. So, um, so if I'm doing three quarter plywood, it's just slightly under three quarter. Um, it's probably fine with a one inch nail, but I think anything over that you want to go to an inch and quarter. But size wise, these go from half to to um, inch and a half for this particular gun. So fairly steep for a gun. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different trim guns out there. This is kind of a modified rendition of a trim gun using uh, the nails and there's other things that have changed that allow it to drive these larger composite nails rather than a, uh, you know, your regular trim nail. So is it worth it? In my shop it is because if I'm doing uh, a bunch of change out of sheets and I got to figure out how to clamp it down and, and screw it down and if I screw up on one placement of one screw um, on a good blade, a good bit, that's 80 plus dollars per bit. And they're, I mean, if I hit those screws, they're just done. There's no kind of working through it. That bit goes in the trash. So it doesn't take very long to do that. Plus the labor savings uh, that you have in changing it over, both getting it down and pulling it up, just wrap it with a hammer, shoot it down. It's really quick. Um, and it holds really well. I'm actually kind of surprised how well this stuff holds into um, the particle board underneath. So anyway, thanks for watching. We've got a bunch of new bunch of stuff coming up. Um, I've got some uh, additional tools in the shop. I've got some stuff coming in, and uh, yeah, just looking forward to some stuff moving. You know, in the future. So, and there goes the air compressor again. So I guess we're gonna call it there. <laughs>